Good evening. I call this March 18th, 2024 Board of Education meeting to order. Adam, can you please call the roll? Ms. Hoffman? Here. Mrs. Conklin? Here. Mrs. Lavalette? Here. Mr. Feller? Here. Mrs. Johnson? Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Botley, I believe we have a presentation. Yes, we do. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our board meeting this evening. Tonight, it is our pleasure to welcome Tara Hay from the Stranahan Elementary School Parent Teacher Association. Come on up, Tara. Uh, she is going to present on the inclusive and accessible playground initiative that's underway at Stranahan Elementary. Thank you for being here tonight and sharing this information with our Board of Education and our audience members tonight. Thank you very much for having me today. It's a pleasure My name is Tara Hay. I am the president of the Stranahan Elementary Parent Teacher Association of Slovenia. Uh, as Dr. Motley mentioned, I'll be presenting to you today um, about our initiative to build uh, an inclusive and accessible playground in Slovenia, specifically at Stranahan Elementary. Uh, our mission is to develop an inclusive and accessible outdoor playground that allows both typically developing children and children with special needs a place to play alongside one another. The playground will address physical accessibility as well as sensory, social emotional, and cognitive accessibility. Our vision is to incorporate the principles of universal design and to remove physical barriers and social barriers. What this means is to have a fair play space for all. Uh, flexible design, uh, simple and intuitive designs, independence for the user, safety, and comfort for the user. This would be uh, such things as ensuring that there's enough space for adaptive equipment to be able to maneuver it around a play space. The playground will also feature poured rubber surfacing, both standard and adaptive equipment, and accessible ramping. So what is an inclusive spa play space? So we all know that inclusive means including everyone. But a play space will include a variety of play elements, a varying degree of challenge. This will allow both users that are typically developing and those with special needs a place to play alongside one another. It'll provide accessibility aspects for users with both physical, sensory, and cognitive needs. It'll allow users to play alongside one another rather than separately. And this is most uh, easily viewed if you look at the diagrams on the screen. You'll see an example there of exclusion. We see this on some of our play spaces today around the community where we have uh, mulch. While mulch, mulch is ADA accessible and approved, uh, it's not really all that accessible to users using mobility devices. Uh, here we'll see oftentimes children left alongside the play space, often on the concrete or the sidewalk, while their peers are playing on, along the equipment. Segregation would be an example where we have two playground areas side by side, one that's fenced in and one that's not. While the fencing will help children with elopement challenges, uh, it separates them from their peers. And this is both a disadvantage to those children and the peers that they have, uh, could be playing alongside. Next, we have integration. And what this is when we, example would be when we have accessible equipment that we've incorporated into a play space, uh, such as an adaptive swing. Yet that swing is in an area covered, surrounded by mulch. And when we have that, while we've made strides to be inclusive, uh, we still struggle with that. And so what we're striving to do is to be better together and have inclusion so that we can develop play spaces where everyone can play together. An environment where everyone feels welcomed, everyone's valued, and everyone, most importantly, can, can participate. So why inclusive play matters? It fosters social, emotional, and physical development, all fundamental things that we see in childhood. It inspires friendships. It promotes kindness and diversity. 
and creates awareness and provides an atmosphere of respect and acceptance and independence. Sylvania School's mission statement includes core beliefs in the whole child, inclusivity, collaboration, community, and continuous improvement. We feel as though this project aligns perfectly with these core beliefs as we are, too are trying to achieve these. We know that from fall 2023 enrollment in Sylvania schools was nearly 8,000 students. 13.1% of those students have special needs. And while many of these special needs may not be visible to the eye, uh, we can help those students um, achieve success with play at an early age on those playgrounds if we have them in a more inclusive environment. Additional facts here, uh, this comes from the Department of Education. Out of 1,000 children between the ages of 3 and 21, approximately 85 will have one of these disabilities. They range from physical to sensory uh, to social emotional, communication, cognitive, and many with chronic health, health conditions. Inclusive play removes physical and social barriers so that all these children can fully participate. And that's what we intend to do through a play space of this nature. As mentioned previously, the location will be at Strandon Elementary. It'll take place in the existing playground area. Uh, what's, what's fantastic about this location is that it backs up to uh, Wildwood Metro Park, and there is a direct access point. When we announced this earlier in the year to community members, we heard uh, lots of excitement from many users and various organizations who are currently using ac that access point um, and are very familiar with these grounds. They were excited to hear about this project. We're also adjacent to the Sylvania Rec baseball fields, so it really makes it an ideal location. Uh, people are currently accessing this play space on a regular basis, um, and to have it be accessible to many more, many more children in the community would be, would be our main goal. When we kicked off this project, we had a budget of about 800,000, and we've been uh, working with multiple different uh, companies on that playground equipment to try to find the, the perfect uh, setup and space. Um, and we've also been able to look through, through find op opportunities to be able to drill down and reduce that budget. Um, a key a component here would be working on a community build environment where we're inviting volunteers in to assist with different elements. Our budget now has been reduced to 550,000. And what we're excited to announce today is that our total uh, now of funds raised through fundraising and donations is now nearly $155,000. So in a short time, we've been able to raise quite a bit of funds. We expect instruction and completion to be in summer 2025, as long as those funding needs are met and we hit our total goal. Uh, I'm, we're proud to say uh, we have several community partners. These are just an example of, of some of those community partners that we have. Uh, Females in Action Toledo, the Metro Parks, the Ability Center, Sylvania Firefighters, uh, Local 2243, Inside the Five, Wood County Plays, Happy By Us, Highland Parent Organization, Valpac, the Sylvania Toy Company, Gem Photography, Copperhouse Designs, and many others. This is where I asked the board today for, for their endor your endorsement as well, because as valued community members, and the, you make a difference. Uh, we are seeking your support on our initiative via community engagement, requesting you share our project uh, and advertise events on social media and newsletters, publicly endorse our project, extend support via community connections and collaborations, well, we've reached out to many organizations within the community, having support of individuals like yourselves adds great value and support to, to our project. Working together with Sylvania Schools Foundation, SAGEARD, Sylvania Rec, Sylvania Chamber of Commerce, those are all uh, valuable members of our community and having the endorsement from you, from you uh, only adds to uh, that collaboration that we can, can build with them. I would be uh, you know, amiss if I didn't mention funding sources, and you know, if those were ever available, uh, we would certainly welcome those. But 
with the community here today, I do want to point out that with donations of $500 or more, uh, we are recognizing all of those donors on our, on, a, on our playground through permanent signage. Uh, we have various degrees, uh, levels of sponsorship available through the playground, and, and we would reflect those, uh, those donors, donors accordingly throughout the playground, whether it be on specific equipment or naming the playground, perhaps. Uh, so lots of opportunities to, to, there, but today um, what's most important to us is, is seeking your endorsement. Other ways that we are currently engaging with the community is through a promotion we have going on right now. Uh, we have partnered with Jute Mode and their Here for Good campaign. This campaign started during COVID as a way to build um, community amongst local businesses and they've continued on with their campaign till through today. Uh, with this, uh, their promotion that runs through the end of the month, $10 towards every t-shirt sold will come back to our organization. But I, I'm highlighting this for you today to just show you how we've engaged the community. Uh, the design on our shirt was uh, illustrated by Maya Butler, a third grader at Stranahan Elementary. We tasked the community and students within the community with designing a t-shirt for us. Uh, their goal was to show us what inclusive play means to them and Maya's design was the winning design. So we're excited to showcase not only her, not only her artwork, but really to, to raise awareness for our initiative. We're also very excited to announce, this is actually hot off the presses, um, an upcoming event that we have. Uh, we've partnered with the Metro Parks and we will be hosting a benefit dinner for the Inclusive Playground on J Friday, June 28th at Ward Pavilion. Uh, tickets will go on sale for this event very soon. Uh, the event will include uh, food, uh, games, we'll have silent auctions, raffles, all sorts of fun. It's, it's, we, it's sure to be a, an exciting night. Uh, we have a website that we've developed in, in partnership with one of our, our uh, staff members who was gracious enough to assist us with the, that technology piece um, where we feature um, all of the information, keep things up to date with what's our progress re what that's being made. Tickets for our events will be sold there and we also have links to the t-shirt sales as well. Uh, you know, together we can make it, Savannah, a more inclusive place for all. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. I would make a motion that we endorse the inclusive playground at Stranahan. I think that's a fantastic project you have going, and congrats on raising so much money. And I will be either Venmoing you or writing a check <laughs> if I catch you today. So. Thank you very much. Is there a second? I'll second. Comments or questions? No, I I think that it's a great, I mirror what Julie said, and um, we had the presentation at SSPO, I think it was last year. Um, I already bought the t-shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Can't wait to get it. Um, I think it's a wonderful program, and I think share, all of us sharing it on Facebook would be a great way to do it, too. I did have a question, though. Um, when this, it, it's on school property, correct? Yes. So then once it's built, will it become a part of this, like, our insured Yes, and our Spanish schools yes. property. So mm -hmm. the insurance and all that stuff we will cover and all yes. that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, call the roll. Julie? Yes. Jill? Yes. Greg? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Thank you again. Yes, we're back to you, Dr. Motley. Thank you, Ms. Lavalette. Um, good evening again, everyone. This is an opportunity I have this evening to provide a superintendent's report. First, I would like to share uh, last Friday evening and also during the day, we had the privilege of hosting the Academic Hall of Fame recipients. We had a luncheon over at Central Trail Elementary, followed by a recognition dinner Friday evening at Savannah uh, Country Club. The Academic Hall of Fame is an annual event where we honor those former wildcats and cougars who have achieved great heights in the world related to their career path. And it was an amazing night and it's always such a good feeling to see so many graduates who come back who have accomplished so much for the greater good. We had doctors, we had an individual who does promotion for the Detroit Lions, just a great opportunity to acknowledge our very own 
In addition, on the athletic side of things, um, the Southview High School turf is pretty much in. They have some graphics they need to lay down, but it is fabulous to see it underway and almost complete. And this week at Northview High School, they are working on installing those huge pillars for our stadium seating. So we are moving right along in regards to our athletic facility um, improvements. Last week, I had the opportunity to serve on a panel with Leadership Toledo. It was their education day, and on the panel, I was along uh, Matt Giha, the superintendent of Springfield Schools, and Dr. Durant, which is the superintendent of Toledo Public Schools. And we had the opportunity to meet with a number of individuals from private sector, uh, business industry, all throughout Lucas County to share a little bit about educational initiatives from um, what are we doing to attract and retain uh, teachers into the edu field of education. In addition, how we work together and how we're looking to build and revitalize some programs and provide different opportunities for students in our community related to the demands of the workforce that we see before us now. So that was wonderful. We received some positive feedback from those individuals. It was so nice to be invited to that event and to participate. Also last week, we had a nationalization ceremony at Southview High School, and I would like to personally thank um, our school board president, Tammy Lavalette, as well as Julie Hoffman for their presence at the event. It was, it made, it was just, it was emotional, it was moving, it was a beautiful opportunity to celebrate with so many individuals who are now officially American citizens and witnessing them take their oath to honor our flag and our nation. And as uh, a couple of the speakers said, don't ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. It was absolutely wonderful. We had students, uh, we had the orchestra performing, we had our choral group perform, the Harmony Road Show, I believe. I know one of the choral groups performed. We have so many wonderful um, musicians in our district, but it was a wonderful event for our community. And um, finally, I would like to share that tomorrow we have a teacher work day in our district and we have several educators as well as support staff who will participate in a focus group with the collaborative. If you're not aware, the collaborative is our architect firm who is working with our Sylvania schools to develop our master facilities plan. This is an 18-month process where we are really soliciting input from both our internal and external stakeholders. So tomorrow we will host a lunch and focus group for about 40, 45 individuals that are in our district. And uh, we will hear from them their ideas and thoughts about our facilities and gather their input about next steps, directions, and goals with our school buildings and classrooms. So an exciting time and lots going on in Sylvania schools. And that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you. We have commendations also. Yes, this is always the best part of our board meetings. Um, I will make a recommendation for approval of our commendations, but we have um, a couple of different groups here tonight uh, to acknowledge. First, I would like to acknowledge that some high school students who, um, from Southview High School, who achieved a score of 26 or higher on their ACT. And then we have several students that are here tonight that we have certificates for that uh, Ms. Lavalette and I are going to call your name and we're going to ask you to come to the podium and receive your certificate. Once we give you your certificate, we're also going to take a photo opportunity to recognize our students who have um, achieved recognition, and we will acknowledge them. And um, then at the end, we will ask for a board vote on accommodating these folks um, officially. So if you would join with me, Ms. Lavalette. So our first commendation goes to our very own Wildcat. We have a Northview High School sophomore, Caitlin Knopf. 
if you would come on up, congratulations. Caitlin is being commended by the Sylvania Board of Education for qualifying and competing in the 2024 Ohio High School Athletic Association State Diving Championships. Congratulations, Caitlin. Next, we have another Wildcat here joining us tonight. We have senior Olivia Moyarty, is that correct? Yes. Moyarty? Yes. All righty, come on up, Olivia. You are also being recognized for qualifying and competing in the 2024 Ohio High School Athletic Association State Gymnastics Championship. Congratulations. Next, we have several students here tonight, um, led by Amanda Racy as their educator. Yay! There she is. I thought she was over there. You moved over there. Pictures, exactly. And we also have Mr. Doobie, who's here tonight to support his students. Round of applause. We have several students here who had the opportunity and present or actually participated in the Ohio Music Education Association, otherwise OMEA, All State Children's Chorus. So we're going to call you up, boys and girls, and we're gonna call you up one by one, and we're going to hand you your certificate, and then we're going to ask that you stay up here and that we can have a photo opportunity. And we have to make sure to get Mrs. Racy in here too, okay? have to be part of the picture. So first, we have Holden Racy. Holden. We have Eve Basio. Morrison Chapetta. Peyton, is it Dake? Come on up, Peyton. Serena Hansen, Hassan, Serena Hassan. Come on up, Serena. <laughs> Hannah Kerrigan. Ingrid, I've been working on your last name. Is it Ingrid Oberadir? <laughs> Help me. I am so sorry. How do you Howdy. say your last name? Ober Ader. Yeah, I, I had the candy spelling. That was not it. Okay, maybe I need to take some wit and wisdom and some phonics lessons over at Maplewood. Okay, let's see. We have Ella Peace. <laughs> Carter Plants. <laughs> Madeline Swick. <laughs> and Adeline Truhi Yo. Trujillo, yeah, right? but not your first name. <laughs> I'm going back to. All righty. So also, Mrs. Miss Racy, we have had a special request from one of our board members if they would be able to sing a short song. Or are you prepared? If not, we understand. Next time. Next time.
They didn't want to sing. <laughs> I'll sing for it. Ms. Lavalette, I do reckon, um, recommend item 4.1, the recognition of achievement, as noted in the board agenda to not only Caitlin, Caitlin Knopf and Olivia Morarity, but also our students from Maplewood who uh, participated in the Ohio Music Education Association Children's Chorus this evening. I move approval. I'll second. Any comments or questions? Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. Adam, please call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we are now at the portion of our agenda for public participation for items that are on the agenda. Okay, then you're, we're with you, Mr. Koch. Oh, oh, if I may, I'd like to, for those individuals who would like to leave, please feel free to do so. Um, We're staying. We know you have homework to do. We know. <laughs> and dinner. It's all good. Don't feel the need to stay unless you really want to. It's your name. I know. It's good stuff. Is it? You're going to miss out. Let me look. Real quick. I put you those names. See that? That was so bossy. Oh, you hit. Did she write it out? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't always. Tetris in the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A Dalen? A Alright, so it makes me sweat. Thank you. Makes me sweat. So 6.1 tonight, I just have success and wellness funds, just a discussion only. Uh, there was, we've had this for years. Uh, it is restricted money that we get from the state of Ohio. Uh, earmarked for student wellness and success uh, and we needed to talk about it and need to put it on the agenda or put it on the agenda and put it on the web but either way it's a lo long-standing partnership we have with Lucas County Health and Sylvania Prevention Alliance we use this money earmarked for our school nurses and our prevention services that we provide with Mr. Giha. Uh, we do get about 647,000 uh, and we are doing that. We have 11 nurses throughout our district and then the prevention uh, counseling services that we have with Mr. Giha. So just uh, if you have any questions for that, nothing really new here, but uh, we did need to talk about it and, and, and share that discussion point. But uh, our partnership that we have with uh, ProMedica uh, and uh, school nurses has been phenomenal from my end from what I'm hearing but um, uh, we do have nurses uh, throughout most of our buildings at least partial so and that, that's ongoing funding that we get year after year yeah it's ongoing uh, success and wellness funds that we get it's it's based on um, it's it changes a little bit through the state budget but uh, it did increase about 47,000 this year uh, about 50,000 so any other questions on that? Uh, so the other, uh, the only other update I have is uh, we're in the middle of uh, insurance uh, committee meetings uh, through with groups of board members, admin, uh, teachers union, and OPSI members. Uh, so we are uh, have had two meetings already interviewing companies, uh, and we have a third one coming up on Wednesday. So. Uh, we'll continue to update throughout that process, but we are in our third year of our agreement with Paramount. So uh, when these uh, meetings get wrapped up and, and we bring uh, a selection of a company that we want to work with, um, we will go through a full RFP process, explore all of our options with our insurance needs uh, on the medical side. Um, and But it's going well. Our, our teachers, our, our classified uh, staff, 
and admin, they've all been really engaging, asking really good questions. I've really enjoyed the last couple weeks. So we have our third uh, third meeting this week, this coming week uh, with a local company, and then we'll have further conversations as a group and, and how we want to move forward. But uh, we're looking at um, all of our options, again, partially self-funded, uh, fully insured, uh, just looking at doing things a little bit differently by still providing that, that great care and that great health benefit that we do provide our uh, staff members. So I'll keep you updated on that. Uh, and then uh, we'll do uh, in consent uh, 6.2 minutes of previous meetings. We had a uh, meeting in February and then last week I was able to get the minutes done. So that is uh, on there as well. 6.3 uh, treasurer's report for the month ending February 29th. Uh, we did get our uh, property tax settlement in for February. It was a little bit less than projected. Um, <coughs> last year at this time, we collected over $400,000 additional in delinquent collections. So that was down uh, $400,000 this year. So um, that was a little bit of unexpected amount. And then plus our collection rate is down as well, meaning really a little bit slight uptick in more delinquents. And then also uh, last year at this time, more people paid for the full year in February instead of half like, like most do. So our collection percentage was down. So overall, uh, we're still up on the year, but just uh, about 800000 less than we projected. So which is a lot of money, but over percentage-wise, um, not a big percent there. So that's kind of the last missing piece for, for the bulk of our revenue there. Um, and then 6.4, availability of funds. We just have one check that we need approved. Uh, new funds, we do have um, a core choir and, uh, and then a Project Unify fund. That those two groups are gonna be using uh, their student activities those student activities funds for uh, some fundraising, some extra extra activities for kids. 6.6, uh, .6, appropriation and amendment certificate, we did get a change in some of our federal grants, so we did need to make some amendments to our both our projected revenue and our projected expenses uh, for fiscal year 24. Uh, and then 6.7, um, we did not buy any buses this year. Uh, and we're going to go out to bid through the Ohio Schools Council uh, to look at potentially getting four buses, two conventional 72 passenger and then two um, special needs uh, buses, 65 passenger with wheelchair uh, accessibility there. So uh, we do have several buses that um, are not able to pass inspection and, and this is one area where we're kind of playing a little bit of catch up. Uh, and we need to uh, turn over our bus fleet uh, to provide a safe uh, to and from for, for our students there. So that is all I got, if you have any questions. I'll move approval on a consent agenda basis item 6.2 through 6.7. I'll second. Any comments or questions? Adam, please call the roll. Julie? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Dr. Motley, we are with you again. Thank you. I recommend item 7.1. This is an annual agreement with Owens Community College for credit, College Credit Plus programming for the 24-25 school year. I move approval. I'll second. Comments or questions? Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 7.2 for approval. It is an agreement with Lord's University to provide College Credit Plus courses for the 2024-2025 school year. I'll move for approval. I'll second. Comments or questions? Yeah, are these, probably Adam's one I need to ask this to, are, they, are these costs remaining pretty steady as they have, or has yep. there been a big increase? No, and no not a big steady? increase at all. They're both, I believe, at the ceiling. So. But each college that we do this with is a different cost, right? So like yeah. UT might be more than Owens, might mm -hmm. be more than. Yep. 
I can chime in on that a little bit as well. I'll give credit to Andrea Johnson, who's sitting out there because she provided me with this information just in case it was asked. But um, the state adopted cost is $166.55 a credit hour. So Lords is right at that, and Owens is a little bit under that at $140. So just to answer your question, Julie. And there are other colleges that we that yeah and in i know in conversations with andrea we won't see one that i know we work with bowling green state university as well as the university of toledo because their cost um is at that 166 dollars and 55 cents so specific email from the university of toledo um, that they don't send those agreements out anymore and they follow the rates set forth by the state adopted uh, yearly as well as by their board. So if we have other universities, I think Finley may be one we're getting involved with, we would get an agreement with them also. And we can't necessarily steer kids toward one college or another that saves the district money because this is one of those unfunded mandates where we have to do it. And correct. So yeah, tech, yeah right. technically you correct. And we, so whether it's costing us, if they're on campus, we pay more per hour, if it's online or offered in our buildings, because yeah. isn't it the case, like our teachers can be, can provide these college That's credit classes. That's what I was going to ask, when our teachers do it, is that through a specific university? How do they get the college credit? They if have our to have a, are? the teacher has to have a master's in their content area, which is quite unusual, but programs or teachers that typically have an automatic master's is um, sometimes world language, art, where they're going on in their specific mm -hmm. area. But um, they, with that qualification, it depends what building or college they have partnershiped with. So some may be with Lords and has signed on, some may sign on with Owens College, okay. depending on that field and the class offered. And to your point, we can't steer. We can't steer and we can't say, we hey, do. we save $30 a credit hour Correct. over here. We not. But it is about <clears throat> options and it is about right. looking at the child's or student's career plan and saying, here's two colleges that offer these courses towards your career But this might plan. be where you're going to end up. Correct. And the, because it's not necessarily true, and I, I think you'll probably know this, or Tim will, it's not necessarily true that if they take these CCP courses that they're going to go to a college that's going to accept those credits. That's correct. Right. That's okay. correct. Okay, that's all. Are you for a roll? Uh, Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Tabarski? Thank you. Yes. I am going to recommend items 8.1 and 8.2 on a consent agenda basis. 8.1, licensed resignation. 8.2, licensed extra duty. I move approval on a consent agenda basis items 8.1 and 8.2. Second. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. Greg? Yes. Thank you. I will recommend items 9.1, which are classified new hires. I'll move for approval. I'll second. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Julie? Yes. Thank you. I will recommend items 10.1 and 10.2 on a consent agenda basis. 10.1 are some changes and corrections to the supplementals for the 23-24 school year, and 10.2 are athletic volunteers for the 23-24 school year. I'll move approval items 10.1 through 10.2 on a consent agenda basis. Second. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Kim? Yes. Greg? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. Julie? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are now on board reports. Greg, do you have anything? I don't have anything to say. <coughs> Julie? Uh, a couple of things. Foundation, the dinner was fantastic. Oh, Jill and I stole were fun. there. Oh, no, it's totally fine. In the luncheon, the luncheon was great too to get to sit with the um, not just wildcats and cougars, cougars, but there were burnham, and I don't know what they were. I, I don't. I don't know what it was called when it was so, just so light, many times. Light. What were lightning? Oh, I don't know. Flash. Uh, they were burnham. Also, burnham. Thunder. Or something. Thunder. <laughs> lightning. They. That was great. It was. A, it was a good night. Um, 
I get to sit on the insurance committee, I do want to give kudos to Adam. Like, it's, this is, that's not real fascinating stuff. But, it, so I was a little bit dreading it, I'm going to be honest. But, you know, I always say yes. But we've learned a lot, like you said, different um, types of organizations come to us to show us the different options. Really engaged group. So, you do, seriously, I know I give you a hard time a lot of times, but you, it's a great job. Like. It's kept me interested, right? It's so you've done a good job. So Thanks. I think that that's going really well. Um, uh, Civilian Prevention Alliance. We had a meeting this week, but really nothing to, or last week. Uh, SpongeBob North Scott State Conference coming. They did SpongeBob again um, yesterday. Uh, went really well, and they have state conference coming there this week. So that is all I have. Jill, I don't have any report. Okay, Kim. Uh, we had our SSPO meeting a couple of weeks ago. We had a great presentation um, from our tech folks on cybersecurity um, for parents and um, updating on, um, we had a cybersecurity pr presentation from our tech folks and from an outside um, vendor slash consultant who works in this area who kind of gave some tips. So. That's on Facebook Live, so people can, um, if you're interested in, in checking that out, it's on Facebook. We have another meeting the first Friday in April, and I do not know what the agenda is, but it will be great, I am sure. It's going to be great. And um, that is always on Facebook. You can check it out live or check it out later. And I believe that is all I have. Hey, Tammy, I got one thing I just remembered. Um, just kind of give, <laughs> give uh, some recognition to Adam. Uh, I was, I'm a member of the HBA Home Builder Association and Adam and Tom Hostler gave a really fantastic presentation on school funding um, and taxes to a, a group of HBA members. Um, it was very, very educational uh, for me and for everybody that was there, so they did a great job. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Adam. You're just all about Adam, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing good to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, for me, the only additional thing I have is that we have a uh, superintendent's advisory committee policy meeting coming up um, in April which actually leads me to the next point on our agenda 11.2 um, is discussion of potential board policy uh, we scheduled this time because as you all recall we had a presentation from a community partner last week um, and seeking to implement a release time course in religious instruction under Ohio law uh, boards of education may, but are not required to, adopt policies permitting this type of um, release time. So we do not currently have a policy permitting release time, release time for religious instruction. Um, in advance of the policy committee meeting, I thought it would make sense to have a discussion about whether we're interested in changing that. So anyone have any thoughts they'd like to share? I have thoughts. Okay, Kim? Um, I mean, my, my thought would be no, and not as much as, um, for me, it's not really about the content, um, about the religious piece of it. I know we, the state has given us that, that option, but we have a policy in place now, um, 5730, that pretty much says, listen, if it's not district related, it needs to happen after school, and also, if you're gonna not, if you're not gonna be in school, for your outside activities, that's a personal convenient absence, it's not gonna be released. And we've looked at, we've had people ask us um, last year about changing that policy to allow, I think it was um, Sylvania STEM Center, parents wanted their children to get release time um, because it, of that activity. And we kind of said, well listen, we have this, you know, this policy that says if it's not district related, it's, you know, we're not going to get into the business of piecing out who we give special release time permission to. And I think LifeWise was a religious organization, but I think my answer would be the same whether any organization that wanted to come in and do something during our school day. I just think once we open that door, there's just no end to the requests we could get um, to take up our school day. And I just think our teachers work hard. You got me staffing. I mean, how complicated staffing is, how complicated calendars are, how complicated, how much work our buildings put into scheduling, um, all the things they have to do in a year, and then try to have fun too. And if we start giving that time away, 
Um, I just think it's, it's a bad idea to start it. Um, not even taking into consideration the subject matter. I feel like there's a time and place for everything and that there's plenty of time after school for all kinds of activities to include, include religious education and that there's just no need to do it during the day. That, that's my big thing, there's just no need. So I would not be in favor of changing the policy. And uh, to piggyback on that, I agree with everything you said. I also would not be in favor of adopting this policy. I was on the board years ago when this came up and we chose not to adopt this policy, I think, for several reasons. Um, number one, we have a curriculum that I think, and a strategic plan that deals with the whole child. And I think art, music, gym, lunch, they're all important. And I think it's disruptive to have kids leaving and entering the building. And then I think there's also a liability issue. These kids are entrusted to be in our buildings, in our care. We won't be vetting the volunteers. We won't, like, all of that is outside of our control. And while parents can sign waivers and they have to consent, if a child is harmed because the van they're driving gets hit or, you know, they're harmed by an adult or in any way if a child is harmed, we are going to be sued. And a child is harmed while under our watch. So I'm very uncomfortable with the liability issues that it raises. Um, I think that the time we have kids in, in the buildings is just already, it's this amount of time to do the things that our curriculum says. So, and I mean also, where does it stop? It's like you said, so if we open this up for religious instruction, anybody that comes we have to allow it. So Westboro Baptist Church comes in and says, hey, we have a program, the Church of, I don't know, Satan, whatever kind of churches there are, they come and we have to allow it. And so I think then that gets into staffing, teachers losing their jobs because we don't have kids for, you know, our, I just think it's a slippery slope and I am very uncomfortable with it. So I would not be in favor of adopting this policy. I, I would like to say something. I believe that we should at least give it due diligence and conversation and discussion. Um, I think that Kim's point of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, releasing during the day is something to consider. I think if you do it after school, then you're going to get into athletics and um, the plays and that type of thing, choir practice, whatever. So that would be a problem. I know that Anthony Wayne is um, planning on doing it during their lunch period. Um, I spoke with uh, someone from Perrysburg who um, said it is, at this point at least, going well. Um, I think because it is parent choice, it is parent permission that it is an option that we could offer. And if the parents do not want their children leaving school, are concerned about liability, whatever, then they wouldn't do it. Um, I, I just think it's an option to consider, for, particularly for children who aren't exposed to that for one reason or another. I would give a chance to expose them to some Christian teaching, and it would also possibly bring that back into the home and might spur on the parent to delve into that more with their children and the rest of their family. So I think it's got some positives. Uh, from my personal perspective, I, I agree with Kim and Julie. I think it's um, disruptive to the school day. And I am also protective of our school day and the instruction that we're able to offer and what we're doing with our students. I think we're doing a great job, and I don't want to give that time away. Um, also, I, I thought Julie made a good point in that it, it's not about whether or not we're allowing LifeWise. It's about whether we're allowing <clears throat> any religious instruction program that wants to come in, come in. And that could be at different times of day. It could turn into even a larger disruption <coughs> than just one program would be. So um, I, I'm not supportive of it. Yeah, and I guess I would like to say I did go meet with um, the LifeWise, the, the pastor. And we had a great conversation and I, you know, I want to say, like for all of us, I think we all sit here, everybody at this table, trying to do what we think is 
best for children. And I think that's what, you know, Pastor or the pastor brought to us. I, I think they are trying to present to us what they think their intent is to do what's right for kids, which is our intent is to do what's right for kids. And that's what we're elected to do. And, you know, I, we just may not agree on what that is. I had a good conversation with him as well. And he indicated he wants to be a, they want to be good community partners regardless of how this goes. Um, and I, I mean, again, my concern isn't specifically about LifeWise. It is about um, any program that takes our kids out of school when it's our opportunity to educate them. Yeah, I, when my girls were at Highland, and I don't know if they still have this program, um, but Highland had an after school um, club. They called it Kids Club. And, but it was religious based and it was clearly identified as such and you had to sign a waiver and um, that, that was an opportunity for parents and I feel like it was well attended. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the volunteer that ran it is still there or if it's still going, but I, I'm, after school I think would be a wonderful opportunity. I know um, a lot of parents may absolutely love that and enjoy it. I just don't understand why it has to be during the day. It just, you know, there's so, and, and as far as choir practice and, all, and, and sports, well, then this is where parents have to make priority. If, if religious education or opportunities um, are important to you, then you make the time. And, and really, 3.30, I mean, who, what parent's not going to love an extra half hour? <laughs> Sorry, sign them up um, to, to stay in school a little longer. I think that's a, it's a great program. To me, I feel like there's just this, unwavering desire to do it during the school day and I, I just don't, I don't get it um, and I don't think it's necessary so. I think I, I tend to I was very much on the fence when this kind of came out because I'm all about you know parent choice and if parents want to decide to do this you know it, it's their choice and but then obviously you know I'm glad we had the present presentation last meeting because obviously you know we got a chance to hear other perspectives and other other viewpoints which I think is good um, you know, I, I do, I tend to agree with not wanting to open up Pandora's box because, like I said, if we do it for one, we have to do it for all, and then I think that could become problematic. Um, I, do, I do get concerned that it might leak into the school day into missing other classes because right now, my understanding is we only have about 40 minutes for recess and lunch in our elementary school. So if there's 10 minutes to gather the kids up, get them to wherever they're going, 10 minutes to gather them up and get them back, your 20 or your 40 minutes is shots, you have 15, 20 minutes of instruction. To me, it seems like a, a big um, disruption to our school day for such a short amount of time. So I would be afraid that it would leak into, now you start missing classes as opposed to just recess and lunch. But I agree, I, I you know, hope that they could maybe do a before school or an after school program. Um, I know sports is kind of a concern after school. Um, you know, and, and I, I talked to someone over there and suggested this, said, do it before, you know, parents could drop their kids off on their way to work, do their deal, take them to school. Um, so I think there's other options. I agree. Anyone else? Okay, it doesn't sound like there's a consensus to move forward with the policy review at this point on that issue. So. Next, we have public participation for items that are not on the agenda. And there's no one signed up for that. So, we still have an executive session. Okay. I will move that we go into executive session for purposes of discussion of pending litigation. So moved. Second. Adam, call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Joe? Yes. 